One of the things that I love about this community is I get to engage with you, I get to read your comments, and today we're covering one of the comments left on YouTube. The comment says, by English Goat. I know that this is a very job specific, but it would be really cool if you could do a video on different credentials econ majors get to be more specialized. Additionally, I'm kind of worried about letters of rec. Those are letters of recommendations. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit too, but I know, but I don't know if there's much to talk about there. Thanks. Keep the questions coming. This question actually got me thinking about life after college. I have a lot of you that are econ majors as undergraduates or high school students going into undergraduate degrees, and you're wanting to build a better future in economics for yourself. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to let you in on a conversation that I have with my students that start first year at Northern Kentucky University. The career trajectory for my students are one of three possible paths. First, they can go directly into a PhD program in economics. Two, they choose to go get a master's degree. And usually that's an economics, social science, or MBA or business oriented master's program. Or third, they go to industry, things like banking, research, policy, data analysis. These are some recent jobs that my uh, former students have um, gotten or landed. The most common approach for me at Northern Kentucky University at the Hale College of Business is our students go straight to industry. However, the advice that I'm gonna give you today applies to all possible career paths, PhD, masters, or industry. Let's get into the conversation that I have with my students. You need to decide what you want to do. A PhD, masters, or go to industry. If you can't decide, that's totally fine. The point here is don't decide too early and put yourself in a bucket. What I find is students come in, they are 100% sure they're gonna go get a PhD, and then two years later, they change their mind and they decide to go to industry or a master's. Or sometimes I hear this, actually I hear this often. Students say, oh, I'm done. After an undergraduate, I'm not doing any more higher education. And as they approach their senior year, they fall in love with economics more and they wanna do research and they go into PhD programs. So don't fall for the sunk cost fallacy. Keep all your options open as you go through your career path. You will grow a lot in the three to four years that you are in college. So allow yourself that room to grow. Develop a mentorship slash advisor relationship. Economics and most business majors or undergraduate degrees have what I call the hidden curriculum. You will need someone to help you navigate these unspoken rules, open up doors for you, you will also need someone to write a recommendation letter for you. The more invested you are with a connection with an advisor or a mentor, the more likely they're gonna be able to write you a letter of recommendation. Places like NKU or liberal arts colleges, it's easier to build connections with faculty members and they're able to write stronger recommendation letters. At larger institutions where you're one of hundreds, maybe thousands of people in a classroom, it might be harder to get a more personalized letter of recommendation, but in institutions like that, sometimes you have the name recognition of the institution. Whatever you choose, make sure that your advisor or mentor has connections, that they're able to connect you, whether it's in acad academia or if it's uh, connecting you with industry partners. But get invested in a, a mentorship slash advisor relationship. Next, I want to talk about taking relevant undergraduate courses. Uh, it's important to have a strong foundation in economics, things like principles of micro and macro. These are the intro level courses, but you want to get intermediate micro and intermediate macro macroeconomics. You want to have a strong math background as well. Econ economic students tend to go into fields that are more quantitative in nature, whether that's for uh, graduate degrees or if it's industry. Recently, my students that have had more success in the labor market, meaning easier time finding a job or higher pay, they've had a data analysis background. So they've developed their data analysis skills, usually through classes like econometrics or the class that I teach or in data tools and data visualizations. Get invested in doing that. Similarly, next I wanna talk about the importance of doing undergraduate research. A lot of my students say, well, I'm not interested in a PhD program or a graduate program. I don't need to do research. 
The reality of it is doing research allows you to think critically, develop your critical thinking skills. It also requires you to work closely with a faculty, mentor, advisor, and this checks other items on your list. But more importantly, working on research requires you to work on a project for a long period of time. And the labor market, even if you're not looking at grad school, the labor market rewards people that are able to persist and tackle a question and think about it critically for long periods of time. So my recommendation is do research in your undergraduate at your undergraduate institution and higher level of output here would be to present it at a regional or national conference for undergraduate students or professionals. Next, I want to talk about making yourself familiar with the process post graduation, whether that's going to grad school or industry. I'm surprised by how many people don't invest in learning about what happens after undergraduate. If you're thinking about going to graduate school, make sure to look at all the admission processes, all the checklists that you will, things of, that you will have to complete, whether it's GRE, GMAT, uh, possible career, uh, possible degrees or institutions that you could attend. These are all things that you should be invested in and working with a mentor will allow you to figure out what questions to, to ask. If you're going into industry, it's the same thing. Take a look at the job descriptions of jobs that you would love to have. Look, what are the, look at what the requirements are. Do you have those requirements? You don't have to meet all requirements, but it's good to know what might be missing and what you could develop while you're in your undergraduate degree. Looking at what qualifications are necessary for you to have to succeed in your next phase in life. Next, I will recommend that you seek out opportunities to gain practical experience. So consider things like internships, part-time jobs, jobs on campus that are available to you to work, work with a faculty member or work to, with a group of individuals, a lab, a research lab, or something of that sort. Your goal is to gain valuable skills and experiences to help you document those in your resumes and so they could be talking points in your interviews to show that you've gained skills that employers might need in the future. My recommendation to you is join the Econ Games. The Econ Games does exactly that. It helps you connect with industry partners, develop your skills, build a network of colleagues that you could rely on and you could learn from. Let's talk about math. Math is really important. As I said, most Econ students end up going into quantitative uh, areas. So having understanding of numbers and how they work is going to be really helpful. My recommendation to you, take as much math as you can, especially if you're thinking about graduate school. In fact, I think you might wanna think about double majoring in math and economics if you're thinking about graduate school. For industry, it's not as critical to take as much math, but if you're in data analysis or working on being an analyst anywhere, you need to know how numbers work. This next one is really something that is critical that a lot of people neglect, and that is remaining current with what's happening in the economy today. Staying current with the news is really important. Uh, understanding policies that are being implemented, understanding business changes that are happening in the economy and the recent macro or microeconomic data that is coming out is going to be really critical. So make sure that you read the news, Subscribe to newsletters like Economics with Dr. A or many of the others that are out there, but make sure that you're staying relevant with what's happening in the economy. The next one is to develop a network. Everything that we talked about right now or up to this point is really important for you to develop your skills, but if people don't know what skills you have, they don't know how to tap into your resources. So you need to communicate with the rest of the world your value added. And the way you do that is by developing a strong network. Uh, at the Hale College of Business, we invite industry leaders to come to the classroom. You probably have that at your institution. Connect with those individuals. LinkedIn is a valuable tool. I've created a video about how to use LinkedIn to leverage your network. I'll link it up here. But if you're, connect if you're on LinkedIn and we're not connected, that's your assignment for today. Connect with me on LinkedIn so we could leverage our network so you could learn about the jobs that are in my network and I could help amplify the work that you're doing. So thinking about your future is scary. There's a lot of uncertainty out there and I recognize that and I wanna help you. 
If there are other topics that will help you make a better future in economics, leave a comment. I love answering your questions. That's what I do. I created a playlist just for you about careers in economics. Make sure to check it out next. If you're new here and you like this video, like it, subscribe. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you for making sure that Economics with Dr. A is part of your everyday. Leave a comment. Tell me what you enjoyed about this. Tell me what other questions you have. See you next week.